Thank you. And thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and good afternoon for the last session of this um, great meeting. Um, and welcome back. And Daja Hao with GO when GVN. Like I learned from my friends. Uh, I'm Dr. Moon from South Korea, and I work at Asam Medical Center in Seoul. And I'm great honored to be here with you to present uh, those speaker, uh, those uh, topics from the ASRIM this summer. Uh, and it's my second time visiting Shanghai, and the first was great, and second was always great. And thank you for the GFA, like especially Ling An and and every organizing committee, Lawrence. <laughs> So, like, to get me here easily and like have fun in here. So today I will going to talk about topics uh, about the genetic testing in ART. Uh, the first topic will be the next generation sequencing, which is NGS by Al Asmer, who's from IBGen in Florida. Uh, he compared the NGS versus uh, CGH for the detection of whole chromosome and segmental aneuploidies in human blastocyst. And the second topic is for the improvements uh, in outcome with PGS uh, by Lee, uh, who's an uh, infertility uh, clinic in New York University. And he PGS with vitrification reduces miscarriage and improves uh, cumulative libraries compared to the unscreened frozen ET cycles. And for the last topic, uh, by Prate, who's from the Reprogenetics, who's famous for Dr. Mune, Mune. And they're uh, about the clinical experience with carrier mapping for the PGD of the single gene disorders. So I'm gonna start from the first topic. Oh, yeah, next gen sequencing. Oh, oops. So they compare the NGS efficiency between NGS and RACGH to detect the whole chromosome and segmental aneuploidy in human blastocyst. The background, the, like now they recently the PGS improves the implantation rates and decrease miscarriage rate and also decrease the risk of uh, abnormal offsprings. And they was evolving from the fish and RACGH, and recently came to the uh, era of NGS. And also the RACGH can be the, used to detect both uh, chromosome and segmental aneuploidies, and now like, they consider it as a gold standard. And so the aim of the study is to like, evaluate the capability of the NGS to detect uh, chromosome and segmental aneuploidies in tropectodon biopsies, and to define the concordance rate between the result obtained by RACGH. Oops. Uh, study material, and the validation study of NGS platform is uh, using amplified DNA from topectodon biopsies in which whole or partial chromosome aneuploids, these were previously known by RACGH. And the topectodon samples from each embryo underwent whole genome application using Surflex kit and for our ACGH samples and reference DNAs were labeled and co-hybridized. And after washing, uh, they scanned and analyzed with BlueFuse software. And for NGS, uh, the barcoding process was done. And the, each library was normalized before pulling and loaded into the mini sequencing instrument by Illumina. Uh, in the study group, uh, they uh, included the 46 blastocysts from the patient who has implantation failure, uh, the advanced maternal age, and who had a recurrence uh, miscarriage or male factor infertility. And the, for the analysis of the concordance rate in segmental aneuploidies, uh, they included a known 20 blastocysts with uh, reciprocal translocation carriers. So the 66 blastocysts was uh, studied, and they found 135 aneuploidies. And in that, 88 segmental aneuploidies were studied, and then 33 was as a control group, and 55 was a study group. 
So embryos were selected if they had LS1 segmental aneuploidies and 10 blastomeres. So the results are they had a high concordance rate between RACGH and NGS for segmental aneuploidies. In known reciprocal translocation carriers, they had a 100% concordance rate with RACGH and NGS. In the study group, uh, with a normal carrier type couples, the concordance rate was 95%. And the totally, the concordance rate between RACGH and NGS was 97%. And there was only a three a discordancy was observed in the test. So the three minor, the cause of the three minor discrepancies were found between our CGH and NGS. Uh, this is uh, because uh, why the aneuploidies are almost clearly detected by our CGH, but that did not reach the threshold in the NGS test. So they had a little discrepancy in their results. So conclusions, so NGS can allow the detection of whole chromosome aneuploidies in tropectodon biopsy with same efficiency as RACGH. And also for uh, segmental aneuploidies, a uh, high concordance rate between RACGH and NGS was observed, uh, both from the control and the study group of embryos of couples who with normal karyotypes. So the implication is the NGS can provide an alternative method for PGS in order to test embryos for structural abnormalities. Because NGS could be the cheaper way and the faster way and to easy, more easy to learn, but we don't know yet because it will evolve, evolve like in recent days. Next, please. So my uh, next slide is, it has a little controversy too, but there is improvement in outcomes with PGS. Uh, it is from the poster presentation in this AS ASRM. And PGS with vitrification reduces the miscarriage and improves the cumulative libraries rate compared to unscreened frozen embryos. From uh, Lee from New York University Infertility Center. And all the people doing IBF, the goal of IBF is also like getting more healthy baby pregnancy uh, and quickly, efficiently, easier way. And there was a, over recent years, like lab technology has evolved and I think like increase the overall IBF success rates like time lapse or NGS or ACGH, et cetera. The aim of this study was uh, I analyzed the cumulative LIBORS outcomes with and without the PGS uh, with our ACGH in patient uh, where the blastocysts were frozen and then used in subsequent frozen ET cycles. Next, please. Uh, this was a retrospective cohort study from 2011 to, through 2013. And the study group was a frozen ET group with a PGS that 273 patients were uh, included. The only normal and nuploid embryo of blastocyst after PGS was included. And the tropectodon biopsy was performed on day three or and or day six, followed by blastocyst vitrification and RACGH. And the control group, there was no PGS group. They included 288 pa 248 patients, and they cryopreserved on day five and day six. So they compared two groups in implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate and the cumulative ongoing pregnancy LIBORS rate and the spontaneous abortion rate. Whoops, back please. So the outcomes were significantly better in the PGS group than uh, the control group. Uh, instead of the, the PGS group has a more maternal age than no PGS group, 
and there was uh, less embryo than the no PGS group. And you can see the result that the implantation rate better, but there was no difference in the clinical pregnancy rate between two groups because I think, in my opinion, that, that the PGS group has more maternal age and they transfer, the no PGS group had transferred more embryos. And in abortion rate, they have low abortion rate in the PGS group. And also, they have more ongoing pregnancy uh, live birth rate in the PGS group, more or less a multi-fetus twin preg in the PGS group, and they have higher uh, success rate in first attempt in the PGS group. And uh, the number of the uh, frozen ETs required to achieve the same ongoing pregnancy rate was uh, 1.3 times greater for frozen ET, no PGS, than frozen ET with the PGS group. So conclusion, the ongoing pregnancy libraries were achieved more rapidly when PGS was used to select euploid and normal embryos for frozen ET cycles. And furthermore, the implantation rate and the libraries rate were significantly better when performing uh, frozen ET with PGS compared with uh, frozen ET alone. So these data suggest that the PGS uh, embryos prior to cryopreservation will assure the better outcomes as euploid embryos are more reproductively competent. And this is for my last slide, uh, other genetic testing studies. Next, please. Uh, this is by the Prates uh, from Reprogenetics, uh, which the company is like doing uh, much of these studies nowadays. And they like orally presented in the, this summer the clinically experience with carrier mapping for PGD of single gene disorders. So like PGD has been performed like more, find more than 3,000 mutation sites, more than 200 gene disorders, and diagnosis is possible when the, the, we know the causative mutation site is known and is accurate, and they have a fast turnaround time. But like months of the preparation, like conventional PCR, we have to make a probe or those stuff take almost two months or some place takes a three months. The same technology has been used for 20, more than 20 years, and there was no change to recently. The aim of this study is to, to clinically assess the efficacy of KMAP uh, for PGD of single gene disorders. The study material and method, uh, totally 43 uh, clinical cases for PGD of single gene disorder were carried out using carrier mapping. And the, for the first 23 case, uh, a conventional PGD test was carried out parallel with carrier mapping. And the rest of the cases, carrier mapping was performed with direct mutation detection alone. And 181 blastocysts were biopsied and the, the obtained the cell amplified with a mul multiple displacement amplification or whole genome amplifications. So the carrier mapping is a faster than conventional PCR-based method. Like I already told you that case preparation takes around eight, more than eight weeks for conventional PCR. Uh, with uh, carrier mapping, SNPs prepare, preparation time is much shorter, at around two weeks, so that patients have not to wait for like two, more than two months for their IVF cycles. Uh, there was high concordance rate between carrier mapping and conventional PGD testing. So 86 embryos were given a diagnosis by carrier mapping and con conventional PGD testing. The results are 100% same. And the carrier mapping was able to provide diagnosis on additional five embryos that successfully amplified, but not inclusive on the conventional test because of the conventional PCR has a, a lead about problem. So for the rest of the cases uh, where carrier mapping was used in parallel with direct mutation detection, 
uh, result agreed between the two methods was 98.7% embryos. So the Kiro mapping has uh, several benefits versus the conventional PCR method. Uh, they have a fast preparation time. Patients have to, don't have to wait for like eight weeks. Last year they uh, said in the they 12 weeks, something like that. It's highly accurate and can detect some chromosomal abnormality, also recombination, contamination, and also can be used in consanguineous cases too. So in conclusion, like carrier mapping could be a for a more comprehensive assessment of uh, chromosomal reason of interest in conventional PCR and for more embryos to receive diagnosis. And data from carrier mapping demonstrate that the method is highly accurate. So the, so the implications are the carrier map utilizes a uh, universal protocol to perform PGD for single gene disorders, not for nucleoides. As a result, it reduces significantly the time that patients have to wait to start their IVF cycles. So uh, inclusion of a direct mutation test may be valuable in cases where recombination occurs close to the gene of our interest uh, when the mutant gene is in a region with uh, reduces SNP coverage or when off offering PGD for consanguineous couples. So this is the end of uh, my uh, presentation and the summary. Uh, about the NGS, the NGS allows the same, com almost the same concordance rate with uh, RACGH now using, and it can be used alternatively because the main effect is uh, NGS can provide cheaper to the patient and faster about a range, about 12.5 hours to get a result. So, but the, also the RACGH is like getting evolving, but we don't know about the future yet. So second topic, uh, the ongoing pregnancy libraries rate was achieved more rapidly also, and the, they have uh, when selected with the PGS. And like if you use PGS, like you could improve uh, the implantation uh, no, uh, pregnancy rate or libraries rate too. Yeah, but I think this has uh, many debate also from now. For final, the final study from Prates, uh, carrier mapping is highly accurate, can offer a more comprehensive assessment of the reason uh, of our interest in conventional PCR and for more embryos to receive diagnosis, but it is effective in finding gene defects, but it is like a little bit problematic finding of uh, a new ploy these too. Thank you. <laughs>